Yes, guys, make sure you're following the GBFC Telegram. The link is in the top of the description. In the end of this month, I'm going to be giving away one of my exclusive GBFC hoodies with only 100 of them made. Coming to you guys on sale soon. As well as that, we have got a signed shirt by none other than Chelsea's main man, Cole Palmer. If you're not in the Telegram, you can't win. Link at the top of the description. Let's get cracking. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Yes, guys, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. This is attempt number two of filming this video. Sometimes, as a YouTuber, you don't turn the microphone on. Other times, like me just then, I was talking to the camera, making this January Chelsea transfer news video, and the camera wasn't even switched on. So there wasn't even a lens that I was looking down, and the transfer window is open. So, welcome back to the daily Chelsea transfer news video that will hopefully be entering your sub box every day when you wake up in the morning, unless you're from Australia, by which point I'm hoping you'll be awake by the middle of the afternoon. As well as that, there's a link in the description, not just to the GBFC Telegram this time, but the Bali travel vlogs. If you're into that stuff, link at the top of the description. My girlfriend and I, we're making vlogs, not every day, but they're cool, they're fun. Get yourself involved. Today we're gonna to talk about Chelsea striker alternatives, to potentially Victor Osimhen, number one target. Who else could it possibly be? Secondly, we're gonna talk about the conundrum. I guess it's a conundrum, I hope it's a conundrum, for Pochettino, because defensively, we've gone from being solid to woeful. And I think the reason for that is that we haven't identified a proper centre-back partnership. Is Todibo from Nice the answer to those problems? And then we've got to talk about the Gallagher situation. We're going to leave that until the end. We begin, though, with this piece of information regarding Dominic Solanke to Chelsea, transfer analysed as Maurizio Pochettino, given Victor Osimhen substitute. You guys all know that I have gone to town on this channel, telling you lot how much I would love Chelsea to sign Victor Osimhen. Yes, a lot of this is down to the fact that there are pictures of him wearing the Didier Drogba Chelsea jersey. There is a lot to be said about the interview that was held with John Obi Mikel, where Victor Osimhen at no point shuts Mikel down, where Mikel is basically forefronting himself as an agent to bring Victor Osimhen to Chelsea. There is also a massive contingent of Nigerian Chelsea fans who watch this channel who are desperate for us to sign Victor Osimhen. I get all of these things. The reason that I want to sign Victor Osimhen is because I think when you look at Chelsea this season, you see us win a couple of matches. You look at the goal scoring charts for individuals. You see Cole Palmer's on eight, Nicholas Jackson's on seven. Cole Palmer, this is massive. Nicholas Jackson, credit where credit's due, those are really good numbers. Those are trumping those numbers of Didier Drogba when he joined Chelsea and entered the Premier League. Jackson's also younger. So when I look at this, I'm looking at a team who, no matter what you say, we are scoring goals. We're conceding a bucket ton. We'll talk about that later in the video. But still, because we create all of these chances and we are still missing more big chances than any other team, Cole Palmer's so young, Nicholas Jackson is so young, you add that with an elite striker, a world-class striker on top, and all of a sudden, I think Chelsea go from a mid-table team to a team in an unpredictable Premier League who can really challenge for European places. Dominic Solanke as the substitute, borderline alternative, to Victor Osimhen, is a very interesting shout. A lot of people will say that because Dominic Solanke grew up in the Chelsea Academy, we got rid of him, I can't have another one of these where we realise that we got it wrong and then we buy the player back. What you need to understand is Cobham has been a thriving academy since Roman Abramovich came here. And as a result of that, there are certain players that won't make it that as their footballing careers progress, we will look at and be like, it was the one that got away. Your Kevin De Bruyne's, your Mo Salah's. That wasn't necessarily academy, but it's in the same bracket of conversation. You've got to look at Dominic Solanke's numbers here. 12 Premier League goals so far this season, and we have only just reached January. That is an absolutely phenomenal number. Dominic Solanke is also a massive focal point in what has been an incredible Bournemouth team for the past two months. The resurgence, the goals that they're scoring, the way that they're playing, the speed in which... Dominic Solanke can run in behind. He's got everything. 
The question I have is, is this a purple patch of form from Dominic Solanke? And is he going to be able to deliver the elite consistent numbers that Chelsea desperately need? At the moment, the talk is Chelsea are interested in Jean-Claire Todibo from Nice ahead of the January transfer window. Now, I don't know too much about this guy. He's French. He's 24 years old. He's a ball-playing centre-back. To me, this sounds good. But at the same time, is that the level that is significantly better than an Axel de Sassi, a Benoit Badiashil, a Levi Colwell if he's going to play in that position? And are we seeing enough from the early stages here from Alfie Gilchrist where we need to maybe prioritise a goal scorer in the January window? It's just, for me, I, I know what I want to see from this Chelsea team. And when I make these January transfer news videos, I want it to be about letting you guys know about the news, but also where do I see this? How does it sit with me? Todibo is a good player from what I have seen of him before I made this video, but I'm not convinced that he's a better defender than Benoit Badiashil, who I think is a really good ball playing centre half, who's great with his feet, comfortable on the ball, but we've recently had our judgments clouded by some high profile errors. Same as Axel de Sassi. Alfie Gilchrist knocking on the door. There's still this gaping hole of a goal scorer, an elite goal scorer that can just win Chelsea enough matches by himself. Can we please prioritise the striker? I know that Trevor Chalaber may be leaving. Thiago Silva is 39 years old. It would be foolish to think that Chelsea in the next year won't be in the market for another top centre-back. We absolutely will be. But I'm talking about priorities here. I'm talking about Victor Osimhen is $143 million. It's a January transfer window again. We cannot just keep going and spending three, four, five hundred million in a single window. So let's get that over the line. Let's get the goal scorer into the club and we can start building attacks around that. And maybe by somebody who's not going to be injured at left back all of the time buy a better left back potentially than Cucurella and let Levi Colwell be that answer to the centre back. Maybe that's what's necessary. Maybe in order for Chelsea to make the most out of an elite striker that we buy, we're going to need to buy a full back who is going to be able to do what Ben Chilwell can do when he's fit going forward from left back, by the way, not left wing. Maybe that's what we need as opposed to yet another centre back. For whatever reason, I fully agree that the fact that we haven't found a partnership and a pairing that is playing game after game after game the way that Terry Cavalio played. That is probably the reason why we keep on shipping so many goals. There is a lack of organisation. Silva's either got a different partner every week or there's just a different partnership every week. Totally understand and get it. But right now, the priority for me has to be Chelsea sorting out that striker. There's also been talks of Giorges from Sporting Lisbon, who was playing in the championship, now is apparently worth 100 million euros because he scored 12 goals in Portugal, or whatever the number is. It's ludicrous. I wouldn't say at this point in time there is enough to be convinced that that is an elite striker. Please just buy Big Victor. I'm going to keep on saying it. We move Conor Gallagher. The contract talks between Chelsea and Conor Gallagher are there, but they are not easy. Conversations are ongoing but nothing is guaranteed. I'm going to make an educated prediction here, and that is that Chelsea, Todd Bowley, whoever it is making these conversations, decisions, is probably offering Gallagher a contract that is just ever so slightly too long for the average normal footballer to consider. Eight-year deals are absolutely mental. You're basically signing your life away to one club. A club who, despite all of these contract talks, have been reportedly willing to listen to any offer for you for a long time, even though you have been a player that's grown up in the academy and wants to be at Chelsea, and your manager, who is picking you every single week, is stressing over and over again to the media, which means 100% in person, Maurizio Pochettino wants Conor Gallagher at Chelsea Football Club. He's picking him in various different roles, giving him the captain's armband, so I think Chelsea should be bending over backwards here to not be listening to £40 million bids from Tottenham Bloody Hotspur where Gallagher literally makes them title contenders. That's how, that's how good I think Gallagher could be under Ange. 
he could actually make them title contenders. No matter what we say about Spurs, they're in contention right now. Gallagher going there would be an absolute disaster. For 40 million quid, taking the bloody piss, mate. They need to give Gallagher a new deal. I think no matter what you say, no matter what you think about the names of Caicedo, Enzo, there's no denying that Gallagher has been better than both of these two put together so far this season for Chelsea. The numbers don't lie. The passion is there. He knows the club. And that's where I'm sat right now. I get excited once we win a couple of matches because that's what being a Chelsea fan is all about. Seeing us win, getting yourself gassed. But at the same time, when things aren't going well, what you cling on to are the parts of the club that make it feel home. And Gallagher is something that represents that. Not just the ability on the pitch, but the desire and will to be a Chelsea player. He has that in abundance. So, these contract talks, if we end up selling him to a Premier League rival this summer, even for 50 million quid, I think we are absolutely plain, bonkers, mad, confused, stupid, dumb. All of those negative connotation words. But the final story that I want to discuss here is Lautaro Martinez, a player who Chelsea have been linked with for a very long time. Maurizio Pochettino is reportedly very keen to bring Martinez to Chelsea. But from Fabrizio Romano, I'm afraid I don't have anything very positive for Chelsea fans on this one. Everything I'm hearing is that Lautaro is going to sign a new deal at Inter shortly. This has been the story for a while. Chelsea are interested. We don't really go in for him. He stays at Inter Milan. I think Martinez is very happy at Inter Milan. He has been this season absolutely magnificent. I remember last summer when we were having this conversation about, is it going to be Jackson? Should we be looking to go out there and actually spend big money on a striker? I was never really that convinced by Martinez, but he's proven me wrong this season for Inter Milan. I just think in the January transfer window, you're not going to get a Martinez. There's not been enough positive interest from him to come to us and leave Inter Milan as of this point for me to think this is going to be something tangible. Dominic Solanke, who we spoke about at the start of this video, that could actually happen, potentially. I just think it all boils down to Osimhen coming to Chelsea. I think it is one of those things that is kind of destiny for both the player and the club. I think it's a match made in heaven, personally. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Let me know also your thoughts on Tadebo from Nice to Chelsea. Is bringing in another unproven Premier League centre-half the answer to Chelsea's problems when there's already an, enough of them lurking around? You've also got to remember Wesley Fofana. If he stays fit, he's brilliant. But he just don't stay fit. So I don't really know where I'm going with that one. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Subscribe if you are new. Check out the Telegram links in the description and also the Travel Vlog channel down below. And shoot out to three channels in 2024. We're here to take over. I'll see you in a bit.